This video is about the squeeze theorem, which is another method for finding limits. Let's start with an example. Suppose we have a function g of x. We don't know much about it, but we do know that for x values near 1, g of x is greater than or equal to 4 times the square root of x, drawn here in red, and less than or equal to 3x squared minus 4x plus 5, drawn here in blue. So on the picture, g has to lie between the red and the blue curves for x values near 1. It could look something like this. Well, what can we say about the limit of g of x as x goes to 1? Well, if you notice, the red curve and the blue curve have the exact same limit of 4 as x goes to 1. And since the green curve is squeezed in between the red and the blue curve, its limit must also be 4. This example is a special case of the squeeze theorem. Now let's state the squeeze theorem in general. Suppose that we have three functions, f of x, g of x, and h of x, and let's suppose that f of x is less than or equal to g of x, which is less than or equal to h of x, at least for x values near some number a. This inequality doesn't necessarily have to hold for x equal to a, because we're going to be talking about limits, and limits don't care what happens when x is exactly a, just when x is near a. Let's suppose also that like in the previous example, f of x and h of x have the exact same limit as x approaches a. So we're going to suppose that the limit as x goes to a of f of x is equal to the limit as x goes to a of h of x, and we'll call this limit L. The picture looks a lot like the previous example. Again, it doesn't matter exactly what happens at x equals a. For example, g of x could have a, a hole there, and its value could be, for example, way up here. Since g of x is trapped here in between f of x and h of x, which both have the same limit L at a, we can conclude that the limit as x goes to a of g of x is equal to L also. And that's the squeeze theorem, also known as the pinching theorem and the sandwich theorem, three very descriptive names that capture the idea of g of x being trapped here in between lower and upper bounds. Now let's use the squeeze theorem to find the limit as x goes to zero of x squared sine one over x. Now you might remember that sine one over x by itself has this crazy oscillating behavior. In fact, the limit as x goes to zero of sine one over x does not exist because the function never settles down to a single finite value. At first glance, you might think the limit of x squared sine of one over x also wouldn't exist. In fact, it's tempting to try to use the product rule and say that the limit of the product is the product of the limits. But in fact, the product rule only applies when the component limits both exist. And since the second limit doesn't exist, the product rule tells us absolutely nothing about whether the limit that we're interested in exists or doesn't. So we can't use the product rule, but it turns out we can use the squeeze theorem. Now this example is a little trickier than the first example, because in the first example we were told what the upper and lower bounding functions should be, and in this example we have to come up with them. But if we look at a graph of x squared sine 1 over x, we can see that it does seem to be trapped in an envelope here. Let's use algebra to see what those two bounding functions might be. Now we know that sine of 1 over x is always between 1 and negative 1, just because sine of anything is between 1 and negative 1. And if we multiply this whole inequality by x squared, we get minus x squared is less than or equal to x squared sine 1 over x, which is less than or equal to x squared. Notice that x squared is always positive, so we don't have to worry about flipping any of the inequality signs when we multiply by this positive number. So x squared and minus x squared are good bounding functions, 
And if we notice that the limit as x goes to 0 of x squared is 0, and the limit as x goes to 0 of negative x squared is also 0, we can conclude by the squeeze theorem that the limit as x goes to 0 of x squared sine of 1 over x is also 0 because it's squeezed in between these two functions with the same limit. The squeeze theorem is a great trick for evaluating limits. When you happen to have a function that you're interested in trapped in between two other functions with the same limit. The example in this video is a classic example where we have a crazy oscillating trig function multiplied by a power of x that acts as one of our bounding functions.